Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a few different styles, and this brewery are of course known for their mainly German styles of beer. And as you know, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, my whole love of craft beer began with the Bamberg Rauch beer. So this is a brewery that I always enjoy revisiting when I make it back to the motherland of Scotland. Now the beer that we're going to have a look at today is one that I've had from them before. I reviewed that in my out and about video that I did at the brewery which was great fun and uh, I know it's a good beer but I'm curious to do a full kind of sit down review of this one and see how it turns out then. So hopefully this makes for an interesting review. I'm interested to return to this beer of course and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So let's see how we go. For this review then we are going to head through to Glasgow once again. We're going to go to Glasgow Green to be precise and that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from West Brewery. So this particular beer is called the Heidi Weisse. It comes in at 5.2% ABV, and this one is, of course, a German-style Hefeweizen, and as the name suggests. So, uh, yeah, I tried this beer when I went to the West on the Green Beer Hall, Brew Pub, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I know that this one is a pretty solid Hefeweizen, so I'm curious to re-examine it and see what kind of flavours and things it gives, actually. But the Hefeweizen as a style is one that we don't get to review all that often on the channel, so that is something that I definitely need to fix over the next kind of year or so. So I'm going to keep that in mind and get a few more examples of the Hefeweizen styles, particularly from Germany, up on the channel, so you can look forward to that. But uh, yeah, I believe I bought this beer at my local Sainsbury's through in Stirling. It cost me about £1.75, if memory serves me correctly, so that's about €2, Euros, 20 Swedish kroner, uh, $2.50 American for those of you watching in different places. But like I said, nice to return to this brewery once again. Let's get cracking with the review. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews, that I've done from West Brewery before and you will definitely see more added to that list in the near future because I do have another beer from them to have a look at. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you, and that's being added to very regularly at the moment because I do enjoy reviewing the Scottish beers when I'm back in the motherland of Scotland and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about West Brewery. So West Brewery, as I've told you before, was founded back in 2006, but in the early years they struggled, you know, really quite badly. But then the company was bought by Petra Wetzel, who is German, back in 2008, and she's built the company up since then. So they opened their beer hall, which is called West on the Green, and they brewed their beers in just a very small brewery adjacent to that, and they continued to grow their sales, and this funded the further expansion of the brewery. So in 2016 they invested five million in new brewing equipment and today the brewery can be found in the old Templeton building next to Glasgow Green and this new facility has increased their brewing capacity to 25,000 hectolitres of beer per year which is pretty impressive actually I have to say and if you want to see what this uh, brewery looks like you can go and check out my out and about video that I did at West on the Green where I reviewed a good number of their beers but all of the beers that they produce are brewed in accordance with the German Reinheitsgebot in other words the German purity law so only uh, water yeast, malt and hops in the beers and uh, as of October 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced in the region of 40 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and they are of course mainly German styles but at the moment they're also going through a phase of transferring the ownership of the company to the employees so this brewery I'm sure will continue for many many years to come but uh, yeah there's not much else to say about these guys other than that you need to visit the West on the Green they've got some great German style food there. They also do very, very good pizzas as well. And it's just a really nice place to kind of go and hang out, to be honest with you. So I would uh, 
recommend I would highly recommend that if you find yourself in Glasgow and you've got a few hours to spare so um, yeah that's everything we need to say about West Brewery for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer itself then. So before we open it up, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we um, open it up. So there you can see the High Device. And the name of this one is a play on the name of another beer which has gone um, right out of my head now. I forget exactly. It's not the, the, uh, the I think it's a, a play on the Meisel Weisse. Um, the original Meiselweiss, I think this is what, when you see the label of the, the Meiselweiss, I think the, the label of this one and the name and the text and stuff is kind of modelled on that. But you can see it's got a little top label on it there and you can also see the West Brewery bottle cap there. Let me just bring that in so you can see, is the camera going to focus? There you are. Still love this camera by the way. But there's also a little bit of text on the back that you can check out too. So let's have a little quick read of that. So it says on the back here, West Heidewiese is proudly brewed in Glasgow in strict adherence with the Reinheitsgebot, the German purity law of 1516, the oldest food law in the world. So this Bavarian style wheat beer is a homage to West founder uh, Petra Wetzel's happy childhood in rural Franconia and also the name of the original brewery dog. So, by law, Bavarian wheat beers must contain 50% wheat to barley. At 64% wheat content, our high device is a former Siba Supreme Craft Beer Champion. Bottled, unfiltered, high device is a complex and refreshing beer of low bitterness with top notes of clove and banana. Pour slowly and with respect and vegetarian and vegan friendly too. So there you are. But yeah, like we said, 330 milliliter bottle this one. Let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So... Open on that side, and there we are. Good. So, a little bit of smoke as we open it up, and let's get this guy out and into the glass. So, here we are. This looks nice. Not the cloudiest of paper bites, let me just check. There's not really much sediment visible in the bottom of this one. There we are. Now, it's definitely a wee bit more cloudy now, and only a little bit of sediment left on the bottom of the bottle there but now it's all out and into the glass so um yeah anyway you can see this beer quite nicely now so as you can see before the head disappears we have a two-thirds finger of a frothy i would say perfect white head you can see that there that is a perfect white head very nice small bubbles on it of course but um, yeah, it looks great. You would expect that from a Hefeweizen. So you do want a nice big head on these beers, but you can see that it's poured a lovely, bright, rich, hazy yellow color. Now remember, the color of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This determines the magnitude of the color. Two, the length of your wort boil is also gonna play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer. I think a Hefeweizen is going to undergo a wort boil of about 90 minutes. I think that's fairly common, but correct me on that in the comment section below if I'm wrong. But um, any barrel aging that you do and any adjuncts that you put in are also going to affect the colour of your beer. But when it comes to this style, you don't really need to care about that so much. Um, there's quite a few different types of Weizen beer as well. Of course, you have the Cristal, which is the filtered version. You have the Naturtrub, which is the unfiltered version. Natural, in other words. Um... And I think you've also got things like, you know, Dunkelweizen, Weizenbox, and um, all of these kind of beers as well. But this one, I believe we could say is a Naturtrub, uh, Naturtrub, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, Hefeweizen, so unfiltered. You can see it's got that lovely little bit of, um, of haze to it. And, you know, wheat um, is a very common thing that gives your beers a nice little bit of haze. So, uh, yeah, looks absolutely lovely, this one. So, um, yeah, everything you would expect in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is a German, Bavarian, whatever you want to say, Hefeweizen. So nothing surprising about the appearance. Let's have a look at the aroma and see how we get on with this beer then. So, yeah, um, straight away with this one, you get a very nice um, sweetness out of it. I actually find this is one of the, this is one of the sweeter Weizens that I've come across. Uh, recently, but I, I honestly, come to think of it, I couldn't tell you what the last Hefeweizen that I reviewed 
on the channel was. Um, as I say, I need to get a few more German ones and review those on the channel and just re-familiarise myself with the style and start to notice some of the subtleties and things again. Um, but yeah, I've had a few, I think I've had one or two American wheats um, recently. But um, yeah, the aroma out of that is very, very nice. But like I say, quite sweet and quite... A, my first impression of this one is that it is quite candied, but you've got that lovely smoothness to the beer. You've also got a little bit of that kind of candied sweetness in there. And uh, you've got just a little bit of hoppiness to it as well. So it's got everything you would want from the style. So let's break the aroma down for you a little bit more before we taste the beer and just see how we go. So the backbone of this one, absolutely, you can smell that very smooth, white bready, wheaty kind of thing to this one. Now I'll say on this beer, the wheat isn't too bitey. It's actually just very, very smooth. You can smell one or two very slightly woody elements coming out of the beer, but you certainly get a little bit of a banana out of this one. So it does give you a wee bit of that banana bread. Um, one or two little elements of, you know, a very, you know, a very, very slight kind of um, coriander, but a very smooth clovey element to it as well. Coriander, of course, is something that you would more associate with um, with wit beers, but I do find you get a little touch of that in this one. But yeah, very smooth, kind of thick, white bready character out of this one. Bit of banana in there, and the banana comes across as being quite candied. You might say that this is a little bit of a kind of bubble gummy element as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. But, uh, you know, on top of that, as I say, you've got a little bit of that kind of clovey smoothness in there. Um, but it does smell nice and thick and smooth, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of that kind of um, inviting sort of sweetness to it. Uh, I do wonder if this is like straight up, you know, pale malt or, or what it is that's making up the, the 20, what would it be, the... Um, they said 64%, so what's making up the other 36%? I mean, I do wonder, could it be, there'd be a little bit of biscuit malt or something in this? Because I actually get a little bit of, you know, I do get a little bit, a little tiny touch of a kind of McVitie's digestive note out of this. There is a wee element of that biscuity kind of smoothness to this one. So there could be a little touch of Pilsner malt or something in this. Because um, it's certainly, I do get a wee tiny touch of that kind of crisp thing that you can get from Pilsner malt, actually. But, or maybe just a lager malt, something like that. Because um, you do get wee elements of kind of bread crust uh, in this as well. Now, the other thing I'm going to pick up on the aroma with this beer is that it's actually quite, um, it is actually quite clean. You can smell the cleanliness of the water in this one. So I do like that about this beer. And this is a common thing that you get with Scottish beers, actually. We're very proud of our tap water in Scotland. So you can, you can definitely smell the cleanliness of um of that water in there it smells very it smells you know authentic but at the same time it just smells a little bit sort of cleaner if you like than some of the german ones because the german ones are a bit kind of thicker and the wheat is a little bit more pungent and spicy sometimes i would say this is definitely one of the kind of smoother and sweeter hefeweizens that i've come across for sure but yeah i think that covers everything we really need to see about the malty backbone of this beer um on the hoppy side of things there's not too much to say on that. Now, these beers usually don't have much in the way of hops added into them. I think they're only usually about 15 IBUs or something, and I'm not sure where in the wort boil that they actually add the hops when it comes to Hefeweizen. I think it might be early edition hops, but very a very small amount of low alpha acid hops like Hallertaus or Tetnangers or something like this. Um, but yeah, I think that's where they tend to add these. But you do get a little bit of a smooth earthiness out of it. Um, not a lot though. There's a wee bit of a herbal character. I do get a little touch of floral note in there, but for me, the green side of things really leans to the um, the green side of things really leans towards that wet sort of grassy um, end of the spectrum. So yeah, I like that about um, about this beer for sure. The green component is quite nice and very smooth and quite in keeping with the rest of the beer. On the fruity side of it, as we've said earlier, you do get a little bit of that kind of. Um, banana sort of bubble gummy sort of note out of this beer that candied sweet banana but there are other things in there of course you're getting a bit of that sort of apricotty note for sure i don't know if you could say there's a little bit of papaya in this one yeah, to be honest but yeah it's certainly a little bit of a kind of dried apricot a wee bit of a kind of sultana note in there for those of you watching abroad sultanas are dried kind of white and green grapes so some of that coming out of this beer for sure and i do get just a little bit of a kind of oily peary sort of thing and maybe a teeny teeny hint of like a a slightly spicy apple or something so quite you know quite dried fruit these are all things that you would expect of a hefeweizen of course and you can smell just the smoothness of those fruits in there so sultanas papayas apricots 
a little bit of a kind of oily pear sort of thing coming out of this one, which is quite nice. All things that you could expect of the Hefeweizen style. So this beer is one of these ones that kind of seems to stick to the authenticity on the aroma, but at the sweeter end for this for this style, in my opinion. So yeah, take a bit of time to ponder that aroma over, but I think it is about time that we have a taste of this beer and see how we go. So uh, yeah, this one is the Heideweisse, a 5.2% Hefeweizen from uh, West Brewery on Glasgow Green through in the city of Glasgow here in Scotland. Let's get stuck into this one. Slandja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah, that's um, pretty solid actually. Um, very smooth and just really easy to drink actually on, on first impression. That's what I get from this, but it sticks to what you would expect of this style in terms of flavour composition, but it just feels a wee bit kind of smooth and slick and clean, which uh, I do like. Uh, I'll need to have a look at my my, um, my out and about video and see if my comments match with that actually. But um, yeah, this is pretty nice. So um, yeah, where do we start with this one then? Um, so straight away you can feel the middle of your palate with this beer. There is a little touch of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing that goes right across the middle third of your palate and the back third of your palate. It's great but that little very slight touch of graininess you get from the bread crust kind of takes the back, goes to the back, um, goes into the background fairly kind of um, swiftly to be honest with you. So I like that about this. This beer really smoothens out very, very nicely. But on top of that, of course, you can feel that smooth, thicker, white bready, wheaty kind of layer there. Now, let's focus on the middle third of your palate then. So in that middle third of your palate, at either end, you can feel a little bit of bread crust. Towards the front of that middle third of your palate, there's a wee bit of a kind of woody uh, note coming out of it. So I like that. But yeah, middle third of your palate, as I say, you feel that you can feel the, the nice, smooth, wheaty notes in there. Now, you do get a wee bit of sweetness out of this one. Towards the back of that middle third of your palate, you start to get the kind of clovey spice out of the beer. But in the middle of your palate, you do have this little circle there. And that's when you start to get the kind of banana sweetness out of it. So you can feel the, can the candied banana sitting underneath. But then on top of that, you also get the, um, you get a little bit of that bubblegum candy sort of thing. So I really like that about this beer. And I almost, I do actually, I feel that I get a very light, bit of that kind of biscuity sweetness, you know, that McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. I do get a little bit of that in the middle of the palate too, and that will be the alcohol coming out of the beer. So, yeah, I think that goes together um, really nicely in this one. It's quite a straight shooting malt base in many ways, but, you know, if you're talking about a 5.2% Hefeweizen, especially the kind of Natterklub Hefeweizen, these ones are pretty straight shooting beers. Now, before I went to, to stay in Germany, um, I used to drink these kind of fairly often. You could get you could get a hold of uh, Weinstefan pretty easily, uh, come to think of it. But when I went over to, to study there, I discovered Hellas, and of course Hellas kind of quickly overtook the uh, overtook Hefeweizen as the the style of choice but these are very nice beers and a, a friend was mentioning that to me that a lot of people get into drinking beer people that aren't normally beer drinkers quite like um hefeweizens so maybe a good gateway beer if you're not too inclined when it comes to uh, to beer generally speaking this one but yeah the this beer really the smoothness of it is very nice and like i say it leans towards that kind of sweeter more candied end of the um the spectrum of the hefeweizens So, um, on the, I think there's not, I don't think there's too much else we really need to say about that middle third of the palate come to think of. So let's focus on the back third of the palate then. The border region between middle third and back third of the palate, you get a little bit of a bready build up in there. Then you can feel into that back third of the palate, you can feel the whole beer just kind of thickens up a little bit. So let's just take the layers again. Bit of 
greeny bread crust in there, a thicker white bready note, and you can feel that the wheaty character in this beer, it just gives you a little bit more bite towards the back of the palate. Then on top of that, you get a bit more of the kind of, you get a wee bit of that kind of coriander, clovey sort of thing there. You can feel a wee bit of the spice. Then on top of all of that, you've got the kind of thicker, more dense, yeasty um, characters coming out of the beer. And they just sit there on top of the, the back third of your palate. So when you start at the back of the, the palate with this beer, you can feel the flavour's quite tall, but it condenses down quite a little bit and just um, sort of squashes together. And I, again, I really like how that goes together. So, yeah, I think that um, that does work out pretty pretty solidly in this one for sure. But um, yeah, I don't think we really need to say anything else about the malt base of this beer, to be honest with you. So let's focus on the hoppy side of it. So back corners of the palate, you've got a wee touch of a smooth earthiness to this one. As you move further forward, it gets a little bit herbal. And as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, it's a little bit more sort of floral and... Um, and aromatic but again the floral notes in this one are kind of wet it's like a sort of it is a quite wet floral note this it's not too bright i think this is most likely to be kind of german hops that are in this one because of that brightness of the floral character it was czech sats which i think is quite unlikely with this style anyway to be to be frank and they would be a little bit more spicy but around the front curve of the palate it's a little bit lighter and more um and more kind of grassy and again there's a wee bit of zestiness in there but you can still feel that sort of wet freshly freshly cut grass sort of thing but uh yeah i like how that um how that goes together but on the um on the front third of your palate then let's focus on this on the fruity side of the beer the border region between front third and middle third of your palate you get a little bit of a bready build up again bread crusty kind of notes then the base of that um, kind of front third of your palate, you get a little bit more of a, um, you get a wee bit more of that kind of um, bread crust, you get a wee bit of a bread crusty note in there, but again, you can feel the smoothness of the wheat, and the wheat actually gets a bit sweeter the further you go into the aftertaste as well. But on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just, um, just roll their way out of the beer. And again, this one is kind of similar to what we picked up in the, um, in the aroma actually so at the back of the front third of your palate you get a little bit of an you do get a, quite a bit of an apricot sort of thing and a dried kind of papaya type note in um in this one so i really like how that um how that goes together for sure but on the um how do you say on the um how do we say on the I think on top of that, you do get a little bit of that kind of sultana sort of thing, the dried white green grapes, absolutely. So yeah, a bit of apricot, a bit of papaya as you move further forward, then some kind of sultana -y notes there. Then as you push into the front half of that front third of your tongue, there's maybe a wee bit more of a kind of oily pear and um, a bit of a kind of spicy apple sort of thing going on with it. So that's kind of interesting in this one. I think you do get a wee bit of a kind of lemony citrus just behind the kind of grassy parts of the beer as well so yeah i like i do like how that goes together in this one so on that note it gets a, a thumbs up from me the fruits come across as really quite dried initially and they, they, they dry a little bit out the further you go into the aftertaste and then uh, you get some nice oily um qualities to it as well but overall i think this is a very very nice beer come to think of it it's pretty solid and pretty drinkable and it's a good introduction to the hefeweizens it's, and it's not too heavy as well so uh yeah and another interesting point i would say about this is maybe i don't find these beers too heavy now because of the new england ipas because those are big thick kind of creamy ipas of course compared to the more oily things that we used to have a lot of the time from uh, that the, were the west coast ipas so that's an interesting point of discussion i think when it comes to the Hefeweizen style, I think with New England IPAs, people will find these a lot lighter than they might have done previously. But uh, yeah, I think that sums up everything we need to say about the flavour of this beer. Let's just round off with a look at the mouth, with a quick look at the mouth feel with this. So in terms of the mouth feel, I'd say this one is bottom end and mid bodied. The carbonation's quite smooth, and I'd say overall this beer does actually have a wee bit of slickness to it. In terms of the IBUs, I think it is fairly standard for the Hefeweizen, which is most likely to be, you know, sort of 10, 15 IBUs. Um, maximum it's going to be is 20, but I, I think it's 10 or 15 IBUs that you're getting out of this. It doesn't feel like 20 IBUs, but the malty side of the beer, again, is very, very smooth. 
Um, the yeasty characters, I think, give it a bit of dryness at the same, as the same at the same time as giving it a little bit of sweetness. And then uh, the hoppy side of the beer is pretty smooth, and the fruity character is smooth and dry, but you do get a wee touch of oiliness in it, uh, as we said, and a wee bit of zestiness from that green component of the hop too. But overall, a really nice, just as drinkable Hefeweizen, this one. I do think it could potentially do with being in a half litre bottle, so you could put it in a proper Hefeweizen glass, but uh, that's kind of nitpicking a little bit, actually. This is one that I would say, and, and also I would also say that about their St Mungo Lager as well, come to think of it. I think they should consider releasing this one and the St Mungo Lager as uh, a half litre beer, or a 440 can, of course. That would be the other thing they could do. But uh, yeah, I mean, for a, this is a pretty solid Hefeweizen, and uh, one of the more authentic ones I think they're going to find in Scotland, actually. Although, that said, I'm not sure who does this uh, style other than West in Scotland. I'm sure other breweries have done it, but as a regular beer, I'm really not quite sure. But uh, yeah, we can leave it at that for this one. This was the Heidi Weisse, a 5.2% Hefeweizen from West Brewery uh, on Glasgow Green in Glasgow. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from West Brewing as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys in the future. As I say, I've got another beer to review from them, which you'll see me review quite shortly. Thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out West Brewery. Go, go and visit West on the Green if you find yourself in Glasgow. And I'll catch you guys in the next review. Slanger, Skull and cheers.